Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Federico Tozzi. I'm the executive director of the Italy America Chamber of Commerce uh, and we are once again in, at the Middleby Residential Showroom in Manhattan with our very good friend Jackie Ratong, uh, chef and also brand ambassador for Viking. And we have uh, Francesco Lupo, uh, our educator, and we have a new chef today, Massimiliano e Andy from uh, the restaurant Cecconi Dumbo here in New York. Uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about another wonderful Italian region. We, today we're going to talk about uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. Uh, first of all, uh, let me remind you that this is an event that we are doing uh, under a true Italian taste campaign, uh, which is uh, financed by the Italian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, organized in cooperation with our association uh, in Italy, Asso Camera Estero. And today we also you know, got the sponsor from uh, the Friuli Venezia jo uh, Giulia region, which is also you know, supporting this initiative today. And we, we thank them for their uh, support. So I'm gonna let our you know, friends to introduce themselves and talk about all the wonderful dishes that you're going to prepare today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Federico. Hi, everybody. I'm Chef Jackie Rothong, and I'm so excited to have you guys in the Middleby Residential Showroom today here in New York City, bringing these beautiful products from Italy and also teaching us all about the amazing different regions of Italy that I didn't know too much about. I thought I did, but I get schooled every time with the chefs that Federico brings in. Um, and we have wonderful Francesco with us today, who's going to be telling us all of our history and facts about our products. Uh, I'm going to be making actually uh, ravioli filled with pear um, and some cheese, some special cheese that we actually have, uh, Montasio. I hope I'm not massacred. Montasio. I didn't massacre that name. Uh, and then I'm also going to be making frico, with, uh, which is pretty much baked cheese or cooked cheese uh, into a crispy little wafer that's going to go onto a salad. So Chef Max, I'm going to shorten the name, guys. You guys probably could say it at home, but... Yes. Please tell us who you are. So, so I'm, my name is Massimiliano, so it's a long one, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's very long, it's very hard to pronounce and understand it's max, it's more than fine. Um, so yeah, today I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm from North Italy, so it's like, it's really close to the tradition and everyone. Um, and I'm gonna prepare some, uh, something, since you use the same product, a pear cheese, uh, which is a, uh, get, get a well, together mm -hmm. as, uh, as we say in Italy says uh, the uh, contadino non far sapere quanto è buono il formaggio con le pere oh, yes. so um, no translation for that yeah this is not translation <laughs> I don't think there's any evidence it's like uh, the, uh, the farmer keeps the best secrets for himself that's ah, okay, yes, okay. True. and uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna make some uh, risotto with saffron oh. uh, pochet pear and uh, um, I'm going to use uh, some uh, the, uh, white wine of a schioppetto for, uh, for, the, for the risotto. It gives some acidity and uh, uh, lemon inside. And then I'm going to make some uh, real traditions like polenta, which is going to make a polenta fritta. So I'm going to make a polenta cake. Then I'm going to pass uh, in the pan uh, with the oil, sage, thyme. And it's going to be served uh, as a crostone, we say, mm -hmm. uh, with prosciutto, quai egg, and some uh, uh, horseradish on it. So amazing. it's going to be spicy. And prosciutto is San Daniele, right? Prosciutto is San Daniele. We don't, we we don't mix to, it with that. We need to pronounce it correctly because there's so many prosciutto, but there's only one prosciutto is San Daniele. Right. <laughs> That's right. We have learned about a lot of different prosciutto. Yes. So talk to us, actually. I'm going to start off and I'm going to make a salad first because... Uh, I think that's quite fitting. That's how we start our meals, at least in America. So I'm going to make a salad first, but I'm going to be using the prosciutto di San Daniele. Prosciutto di San Daniele. Yeah, that's I'm going to be using that. So tell me about that and what makes well, it so different. From the identifier the of the prosciutto, because mm -hmm. as we say, there's many prosciutto in Italy, is the location where it comes from that makes it unique. And San Daniele is a very unique area. Uh, it's uh, the crossroads of the Adriatic Sea and uh, Dolomite Mountains, uh -huh. uh, San Daniele is an high elevation. It's a small town. Uh, there's not that many producers uh, compared to other uh, prosciutto that are made in Italy, but mm -hmm. uh, they are defined by the uniqueness of the flavor of the product. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to be a prosciutto di San Daniele, we have to understand, you know, it's like you have the Adriatic Sea on one side that brings those breezes from the side. The uniqueness of the soil, because we have to understand that Friuli is uh, at the crossroads of uh, many uh, uh, geological uh, features, mm -hmm. and mainly the Karsik, uh, uh, the Karsik uh, areas and 
the Dolomite Mountains, the uniqueness of those minerals, actually do affect the products. That's why products from uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia are very unique. See, I feel like throughout these uh, classes, we've really learned that like environmentally, the food yes. in Italy is affected greatly by where it's located. By the habitat, when the location, where it gets cured, where it gets processed. Don't forget, this is a DOP product. Right. As a DOP product, it was a, it's a standard uh, uh, program from the uni European community that defines, in order to be a DOP product, which is the prosciutto di uh, uh, San Daniele has been since 1986, mm -hmm. it needs uh, to be, everything needs to be done specifically in the geographical uh, area, um, because that's where the flavor and the uniqueness of the product comes from. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, the, the town of San Daniele with the, with the magical air that they have coming in from the Adriatic Sea and, mm -hmm. and the mountains creates uh, microclimates that dries uh, hams in a specific way that gives a specific flavor. Compared to other uh, prosciutto from Italy, the uniqueness is this uh, sweetness that you find in the product. Mm -hmm. uh, the salt is uh, added a little stronger compare, and, but it gives you always a clean tasting product. So, so do you use the, this type of prosciutto in a different way than you would use prosciutto from, from Rome or yeah. from, from anywhere else? Yes, because, uh, I mean, as, as, uh, as we say, it's like the saltiness uh, and the sweetness. Mm -hmm. There is some prosciutto that is much more salty yes. and it's like it's, uh, it's going very well with different plates where it's uh, more sweet. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this one is kind of melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, of course, they never be cooked, uh, it just a uh, little bit served with something warm. So you get the temperature. Yeah, right? like it melts a little bit, not enough not to destroy the profile, Correct. but it melts in the way. And I just want to make sure that it's understood that in order to be called prosciutto di San Daniele, there's certain parameters of, of the production that needs to be uh, followed. Uh, the consortium sets out the parameters. The animals need to be bred in a specific area. Mm -hmm. They need to be fed a specific diet. One of those things is they're all a natural diet. Prosciutto di San Daniele is a very natural and clean product. It has pork and sea salt. There's nothing added to it. And okay. the animal don't eat anything that's, uh, don't eat animal byproduct or anything else. Okay. That's uh, a very strict factor because you start with a, a main ingredient that's basically that, that is gonna absorb that beautiful air. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want it to be uh, having off flavors to begin with. Hmm. That's very interesting. So while you're really making the salad, I'm gonna start yeah. a little bit of the, uh, we're gonna start with the polenta. So polenta, I'm just gonna start as a base, uh, as a water, a little bit oil and salt. Then uh, when uh, the water is start boiling, just uh, start like adding little by little and keep whisking it. And how long does the polenta take? Is this it's like quick cooking polenta? Or well, this one is uh, the long one because okay. it's gonna take uh, about 20, 20 minutes to cook. So and still, that's not that long. No, yeah. but it's like the, the nice thing of the polenta, you can keep it, uh, uh, you can keep cooking for uh, for hour and doesn't doesn't really lose in it. It's like right. if you keep it uh, after the 25 minutes, of course it's cooked. Sure. Then it's gonna go, go through for a uh, two hour, three hour. It's very funny because in Italy we have uh, this tradition um, where we serve uh, of, uh, normally like of the, uh, how do you say, at the city, uh, city events. Uh -huh. We serve with the sausage and uh, the polenta is coming out from the, from the like, it looks like a soft serve. Oh, yeah. wow. It's coming with the glasses, it's like people oh get served God. from uh, from polenta and sausage. Um, they, see, in America they try to do something like that where they take a big marble slab and they just slap all the polenta yeah. on it and put like mushrooms and sausage and everywhere. So that thing. sounds kind yeah. of cool. That sounds the really thing cool. with the polenta, polenta is that this identifies the, the, the people of the region that, uh, like Friuli Venezia Giulia, they are contadini or farmers. They're very hearty. They, they eat well. They, so, you know, because of the weather, they need something that keeps them warm at the time. So polenta is the perfect right. combination. Not too expensive. Uh, the addition of a meat. At the center was so people could eat the portion of polenta and get to the, the price that will be the, the piece of meat that will be at the center of it. Got it. So it's something hearty to kind yes. of complement. Yeah. yeah. It gives you a substance for the, for the work in order to make some great prosciutto or cheeses. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, so for mine, actually, for the Montasio, I'm going to do frico, but 
my Frico might be different from what you guys do, and I think it is. <laughs> uh, because I was doing a little research beforehand because, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm from New Jersey, so uh, I have a very well, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's the 22nd province of Italy. It is, it. right? So, I, I consider yeah, it. Um, so, you know, so, so there's more Italian flags than anything else. There definitely okay. is. There definitely is. Uh, so what I really, you know, have grown to know is Frico is pretty much cheese that's cooked in a pan or in the oven that becomes crispy just like so, and mm. you kind of put it on top of salads. But when I was researching the area, they do something with potato, right? Yes. It's like a, it's like like a, a potato. frittata. So it's like a pancake. Yeah. yeah a pancake. It's, it's like a pancake. And, and the majority of it is, is cheese, potatoes, right? Potato, cheese, is a blend of potato and cheese, yeah. uh, mashed potatoes and cheese, and then okay. that gets used as a vessel to add, you know. Uh, so mashed oh, potatoes. Mashed potatoes, yeah. Oh, wow. And you know, it looks like, you know, like you said, like a, a round shape uh, disc. Yeah. It almost uh, very looks fluffy. Like a, a roasty or something. Yeah, yeah. A roasty. To that, right? And you know the the version of uh, frico that you're making is a version that I don't know if it must be from another part of uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. Yeah, it's you know it's, it's used as a vessel. New Jersey, yeah, yeah, right? New Jersey. This yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> not welcome, from New Jersey, right? but you know. <laughs> I think somebody came up with the idea of that uh, holding the to hold the, like the risotto that we're making. Uh -huh. You know, they make like a shell. And, right, right, right. And yeah. they call it frico because they didn't have a better word to use it. You well, know? you know what. We're, we're showing you how to do yeah. it here today. As long as you use Montasio, which is uh, uh, the which key. Which I'm doing, so that's Because everybody good. thinks that uh, in order to make frico, you should use uh, uh, another cheese. Pecorino, which, uh, Parmigiano. Which, uh, the original yes. frico is made with Montasio, and uh, Montasio comes from a specific area in Friuli, Venice Giulia, uh, the Montasio Mountain, and uh, it's been made since the thir thir 13th century. It has a uniqueness of uh, the production is the fermentation. Okay. That gives you a great flavor uh, as it ages. And is it a cow's milk? Cow's milk, 100%, cow's milk. all natural, uh, lactose free. That means that people. I love that. The people with lactose uh, intolerance can, can have it. So it's funny because when I was in Italy, um, and I was actually at one of our restaurants, uh, uh, Chef uh, Ricardo, Osteria 57. He was one of our, our uh, special guests on one of our True Italian Taste episodes. And um, I was there having dinner one night, and uh, another couple was having dinner as well, and she's like, Oh, I'm dairy free. I can't have, I can't have this cheese. She got her meal and everything, and I'm always eavesdropping on people. And I was listening, and you know the the maitre d came to her and said, mm -hmm. Oh, this this cheese is actually lactose, lactose free. Lactose free. Like you should be able to. She goes, I cannot eat this. I cannot eat it. And she just kept sitting there. I was like, Oh my goodness, someone needs to. She didn't watch the show. That's what happened. Yes. She didn't watch the episode. Actually, it, there's uh, quite a few cheeses that age cheeses that are lactose free and. Uh, Montasio is one of them. It's, um, you know, it's something that is just not known in America. It's a process of aging or uh, yes. drying that actually. Uh, even in Italy. Yeah. Oh, because, really? Uh, yeah, okay. because I mean, it's like it's a, you know, it's a part of the culture, no? Yeah. It's like it's culture. a, and it's a, it's a cheese, and you connect cheese, it's like, oh, can Cows, be like, no, okay. yeah, yeah. sure, you know, sure. it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that, that you say is like, a, the process of this process, they, they, they eliminated the lactose from cheese. Right. So yeah, as they like, something. and. The uniqueness of the cheese is that it's made by cows that come from that area mm -hmm. that feed on, on, on the soil and the mineral that I was talking before comes through very strongly. Right. I won't use the word territorio, but you know, I'll use that the soil actually adds a lot of flavor to the product and the grass that the animal eat because the cheese is actually a raw milk cheese. Uh, starts out as a raw milk cheese. That's all the microflora and everything that's uh, unique to the product. If you know you're not able to, you won't be able to, do, uh, to add the flavor to the cheese. Um, it's uh, one of those cheeses that uh, is versatile. It comes in four ages. Uh, the fresher has a young, fresh, grassy flavors. Uh, as he ages, it becomes more butterscotch, mm -hmm. more intense. You know, wow, uh, so it gets to get a lot of... Yeah, you, you get a lot of dimension. So when you buy Montasio, you should always look and ask for a specific age. If you know, should try all four of them. So you can distinguish the flavors and how they adapt to cooking. So you know? how long does it eat? Uh, like the fresco the is uh, 60 to 120 days. Okay. The mezzano or middle is uh, five months uh, to 10 months. Uh, the vecchio is 10 months to 16 months. And then the stravecchio, which is more than that. The stravecchio is very unique because it's like eating candy. Wow. Uh, very rare to find in the US. Yeah. You know, That's a, a point that you should look at because uh, you may see stravecchio on, a, on a, a cheese that's not made or a DOP that's not a DOP. And that's just a gimmick to sell you more. But in the case of Montasio, 
Astravecchio is a very old cheese that right. has a uniqueness, a very sweet flavor, huh. you know. It's, um, it's funny because I feel like in Italy when these companies like are developed, right, mm -hmm. where you know, you have your prosciutto maker, your wine maker, your cheese maker, like this is all family owned and all passed down. Yes. Is that how it works? Because That's I could just works. go there and be like, you know what? It works. In, I'm the case, start a in, the, in the in the in the case of San Daniele, the prosciutto, yeah. it, there's been like uh, between uh, twenty to forty families that make prosciutto that's been making oh, it wow. for for generations. They right. start as a butcher. And that's what makes it so special. And that's what makes them special. I mean it's uh, and unique. The same mm -hmm. thing with the cheese. Actually the Montasio it's one of those uh, cheeses that actually create a social environment uh, called the co-op or latteria, where the producers, in order to survive, they bond it together, grow the milk, and they start producing it oh, in wow. bigger quantities and uh, great, with a great uh, quality of the milk. Wow. So it's complete so. teamwork. Teamwork. It's all about teamwork. That looks oh. interesting. What are you doing over what there? Doing? So I'm, uh, I'm starting to fry the polenta over here. It's uh, with a little bit of oil, um, thyme, and sage. So I was gonna get like a crunchy. Uh -huh. And uh, right here, so I was making in the one with the um, corrafano is a uh, horseradish, which is like his most famous maybe for the for the wasabi. It's like mm -hmm. flavor. So when I saw him, I told him, like, uh, are you Japanese? Are we cooking <laughs> Japanese, a fusion? Yeah, it's like. He's got yeah. a little fusion going on. Yeah, exactly so. And uh, I'm gonna cook the quai eggs. Uh, it's gonna be on top of the polenta to give it some uh, like a creamy yolk uh, oh, for, uh, for everything. Nice. So the quai egg are, a really small egg, uh, and uh, y you can uh, crack it uh, like a regular egg. You have to open it with a knife or regular knife. Right. Um, then here we have uh, some uh, sim water and uh, red vinegar. We just drop inside like a regular poached egg. Wow! And quail eggs, those those are Italian. Well, I mean, <laughs> actually, I'm sure no, no, but <laughs> all right. Are they quail? Are they no, no, they are quail. Right? Actually, I'm the like, Romans, what part, what the Romans who are big users of quail eggs. Uh, really? Uh, a lot of things that we think that are unique and uh, modern or the French chefs. They've been around forever. They've so been that, around forever. That's what I like you to know, see because they, it's like she, in America, you know, that's not the case. Quail probably, quail eggs were uh, part of the Roman parties. So. Yeah, also, but and, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's like if, when you go in, uh, in uh, Piedmont, where I'm from, it's like it's, it's really influential from France, uh, uh, from, uh, from the culture of there. It's not, it's not really rare to find the quiet in the restaurant. So. I'm going I'm to correct you on that because you're going to upset the French ones. Because we're the, the Tuscan that brought fine cuisine to, the, uh, to France with oh. the Caterina de Medici. Well, I'm, I'm just happy about it. Yeah. Just, I, uh, I wave uh, my uh, flag all no the fan. time. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> it's all in good jest. You know, of it's course. Uh, I mean, absolutely. You don't want to start no a French. fight with a <laughs> French. You know. um, okay, guys, I'm finishing. I don't know if we could call this a Frico fruit salad anymore, but I'm finishing a really delicious salad that has Montasio cheese that's been crisped up in the oven for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 375. You guys can see how crispy and really like see-through it got. It's almost like honeycomb looking. It's really cool. Uh, and I have, I thinly shaved some uh, cantaloupe, some Granny Smith apples. Uh, cantaloupe and prosciutto are like a classic thing. In, fruit in Italy, in, yes. In Italy. Okay. Whew. I'm still here. It's okay. I can stay on the show. No, no, it's, it's um, okay. <laughs> that seems pretty classic to me. It's a classic I, combination for the summer. Right? Because, and you it's know, like people, bright and airy. And the sweetness and of the prosciutto, the saltiness, is a great combination for mature fruit. Exactly. You know, yes. that's what the key to that. So I did cantaloupe, thinly shaved. It's almost like a carpaccio. Um, and then the Granny Smith apple, some fresh orange juice. But I have to say... You, I should have warmed my honey up because you guys were saying how warm goes yeah. really well with the prosciutto and that kind of would have been a good thing. But these are like little things I'm learning, which is... Uh, in this case, I see it will be a summer dish. It really won't warm up because the temperature will be enough. Okay, good. Especially since you use a 20-month prosciutto in San Daniele. Yeah. You know, you have to understand that the different ages of prosciutto, you know, there's three ages, uh, 14 to 16 months, mm -hmm. which uh, are very... Uh, uh, the flavors are very delicate, mm -hmm. so you may use it for sandwiches, uh, maybe into cooking, so because it's not well defined. But as it gets a little older, like you know, right. 18 to 24 months, this is a 24 months. So this one, it, this one, it needs to be eaten like this. It's just uh, room temperature, yeah. you know, the where the fats start uh, uh, dissolving, they start coating everything. Right. The sweetness of the prosciutto will come through will be great. Beautiful. Oh my uh, God, that's gonna be so, so good. 
I'm so excited. I'm going to start on my next dish, which is a little more in depth. So I figured I'd do the simple one first and not intimidate you guys and get a little more complicated, which is ravioli, which is going to be so good. Um, so my filling here I have kind of prepared. I took, uh, peeled and cored some pears, and uh, I grated them. And I grated them into some fresh rigosa. Uh, and I strained that ragotta so that I got all the moisture out because I knew the pears were going to have a lot of moisture in them. Now to this, I'm going to add uh, some shredded montasio, which is um, going to be kind of give us our salt level, and it's going to be really, really nice inside the ravioli. So that's what I'm doing. And I have some pasta sheets rolled out too that we're going to uh, fill these with. What's going on here? So I'm gonna finish up the plates right here. So with the prosciutto, quail egg, horseradish, honey, and uh, we got just uh, gonna give some uh, shredded on top of the. So, so is this a dish that you would eat at home? This one every day. Every day. Every day. Well, at home, <laughs> at home in Italy, like uh, with your family, like. Well, yeah, it's like it's uh, as I say, polenta, polenta fritta, especially. You normally make the polenta the uh -huh. day before, uh -huh. then you eat the polenta fresh. Right. And then uh, whatever is left over, you just put in a tray, and you're going to eat the day after. And, uh, I love that. So you're using everything you have. Correct. And uh, what, what's fun is like it's, uh, you know, Nutella, no? you know, like the famous spread, the uh, chocolate spread. We Do eat uh, yes. polenta with Nutella. <gasps> so How? I know it's like I've it's something crazy. <laughs> but in so the morning, it's like polenta Nutella. I think it's the best thing you can have. Oh my God, that sounds absolutely amazing, and I'm really upset. Why are you not, why are you not making that today? Well, I'm See? sorry. Like it's, uh, that was my anger coming out in the pan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, think, I think we're reaching into a different region of the Huda Nutella. So. Yeah, definitely. Those are yeah. crossover over well. So. Yeah, yeah, I put yeah. Nutella true. everywhere, so it's like it's... Uh, that's it's true. They <laughs> see, like, you know, he, he, the dish that he did, like a younger uh, prosciutto in San Daniele would be perfect because, you know, uh, to the heat, it will adapt very well. The heat of the polenta will... Uh, bring out all the flavors that are in there. So yeah, that's going to be. That's important when you use that. And, and one thing I forgot to mention is the identifiers on these products, these okay. DOP products, yeah. because you were talking about grated Montasio, but you know nobody will know if it was Montasio to begin with. Right. So you know, and you, the all the DOP have identifiers on the scalzo. You have the name here that says Montasio. You have the dates of production, so you know how old the product is. Um, and uh, that's very important because that's the only way you really know that it's a Montasio. You see the logo, the uh, mountains of Montasio. And if for the San Daniele, you see the leg, the San Daniele that says SD. And uh, the SD is fire branded into the ham. And if it's not fire branded into the ham or it's not anywhere in the label, that means, you know, it's not real San Daniele. Mm -hmm. You know, in the U.S. Uh, may come pre-sliced. I was going to say, how can you tell when it comes pre-sliced? Because it can only be, be pre-sliced in Italy. And uh, that's why they have a, a packaging that has the identifier on the packaging. As you can see right here, it has the consortium of the San Daniele. And it will have the same identifier that you'll find on the prosciutto di San Daniele. Yeah. So while you're making the ravioli yeah. and you explain everything uh, yes. about it, I'm, I've just started my risotto. Uh, it's, uh, just start with the chopped shallots, a uh, little bit olive oil, and then we toast it until we can, uh, we can actually have in your hands anymore, so it's like it's too hot for that. It's about two minutes. And then after that, we just uh, put some uh, white wine. So uh, white wine, talk to me about that. Where is that from? Is that from this area? Yes, actually, uh, uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia has a great uh, wine uh, uh, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, they do uh, gray whites. Um, this was a wonderful red, but uh, we have a uh, some of the Tokai that has changed name, that was called Frugano, uh, which is excellent. Uh, the, the grapes are, oh, hold on. Actually, we have Mr. Uh, uh, Bert uh, Tozzi that's going to talk about the wines. Oh, yes. So we, I do. Was, we do. I was, so we don't have to go crazy. I got in about trouble them, now. I'm just going to use it. I know you're okay. just going to use it. And then we'll <laughs> touch upon it. it a little so bit. So I'm, I'm using this, uh, I mean, Beside the story of the wine, is like I'm using this specific because it gave a little bit acid yes. at the dishes, which is uh, going well with the pochette pair, which is right now I'm going to start it. So I just uh, make a base of uh, sugar, anise, and water, and I just drop inside the, the pear, cut in four, and we leave it there, cooking for about 30 minutes, like simming. Then we take it off from the, from the fire, we just leave it cold down. 
time we get uh, some, uh, some no, I would not say candy because it's not really super sweet, but it's a uh, cook beer, uh, like with the back flavor of honeys, uh, and uh, it's, it's really fresh and it goes very well with the risotto sap. I'm sorry, I missed, what was the main flavor in there that you're putting anise. them in? Anise. Anise, yeah. yes. Beautiful. It's going well with the, with the saffron, it's going well with the wine, so it's like it's melt all together. It's Marrying it like together, beautiful. yeah. Um, I'm going to fill my ravioli now. So is this like a class, like I know I'm using the cheese in, in a, the correct way, but is ravioli something that's popular in that region? Or not really? Uh, some uh, pasta that has like ravioli shaped and similar, yes. They have, they, you know, fill pasta is popular all over Italy. So okay. they do have a, a, a similar product. Um, so I made my pasta dough fresh. Um, it's an egg-based dough, so usually what I do, correct me if I'm incorrect, but what I do is for every 100 grams of flour, I do one egg, um, one large egg. That's usually where I'm at. I like to add a little semolina with my double O flour, kind of give it a little extra secret there. Yeah, but over there, I think there is a 3,000 recipe for that. So every uh, there's so many recipes secret. for like, pasta. There is someone that just used the yolk. It's like for each kilo of flour, they use uh, 50 yolks. Yeah, which it's is, uh, crazy. It's, you know, when you eat one, one ravioli, it's basically it's, uh, like two eggs. Yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, it's but true. it's such a beautiful color dough. Yeah, so. exactly. Everyone finds this way because everyone is like, he likes the density of the pasta. Right. You need to be familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has to do with from, uh, families, traditions, sure. and how things are brought down. Don't forget, and everything that we do and, and represents the culture and the, and the, the tradition of our. Uh, our people, so that's and also I, keep it. I know, like financially, what that area could afford in that time, right? Yeah, like if it's, they it's had uh, eggs. economical. Yes, if eggs is uh, or like you know, you don't see that much uh, olive oil in there. You see more butter, right. uh, cream, you know, the more than uh, anything else. Um, preserved meats uh, because of uh, uh, the winters, right? Which I can say everything tastes better with butter anyway. So. Yes. Oh, it's the same. Oh, from, uh, from my region, it's like 90% so. of that is like it's, uh, it's You know, but there is areas in the north that uh, have wonderful olive oil, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I always see olive oil better for a finished plate. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, as a personal I agree thing, with because that, it's yes. raw, it uh, tastes better. Uh, but the butter is like, it's good for, uh, for example, for a risotto, for uh, this. Uh, mantecato. Yeah, mantecato, it's like everything. Uh, I am just filling um, the, them, my raviolis, right now, and I'm just going to, I have a very uh, really useful pan, ravioli pan, that makes it a little easier than doing it by hand, so. C4, um. I saw that you used the uh, young Montasio, which is perfect for, because oh. of the melting points that he has, compared to uh, the aged Montasio, which is uh, for grating and. Uh, Do we have both here? Uh, the young Montasio is the bigger piece. Okay. The one that slices is uh, Stravecchio. Ovecchio. Wow. Well, that was just pure luck, everybody, that I chose that one. So that is, that is exciting. So, <laughs> so I'm going to brush off the extra semolina that I have on here right now. And I'm going to put this right on top just to seal it off. And any extra pasta dough scraps you can put into a soup or, uh, you know, don't, don't get rid of them ever. All right. So what, chef, is your favorite ingredient from your region? Favorites. Well, it's, uh, I mean, I, I would say truffle because I <laughs> like to put truffle in oh, every single it's thing. Easy. Well, well it's I mean, truffle, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, but it's like, it's, it's true. No, um, that's a good one. How about truffle oil? Uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, in the, especially in the season between uh, like October, November, December, mm -hmm. it's like, even if, if you go in every restaurant, you see the smell of, uh, I mean, for, for the first timer, it smells like gas, so it doesn't smell good. Right. But that you have to try it, you know, it's the one thing, it's like once you try it, uh, there is something in your brain like go crazy, and you have to find always more, right? It's, uh, I love that. Okay. Another thing that Friuli is known for is, is uh, aromatic uh, salts, like because they have salt pans, ah. and they do a lot of, uh, there's a lot of companies that come out of Friuli that, do rubs and uh, salt for meats and mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, wonderful because you see salt and local herbs. Uh, unfortunately, you don't find that many in the U.S., but if you ever get your hands on it, you should try it. So different kinds of salts. 
Yeah, the salts were, aroma were, were herbs from the area. Mostly used for grilling meats or fish or local right. product. But the flavors are very unique to uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. And are the salts filled with like uh, citrus or? No, 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 just okay. herbs. Just herbs, okay. Dry herbs. I think I overfilled my raviolis, guys. Oh well. That's okay. We're gonna have some overflow because this is live. Not really, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. So what else is, okay, talk to me about your risotto. How's okay, that going? Okay, so <laughs> the, I mean, the risotto, as you say, maybe it's not really typical from Friuli because uh, it's more maybe from the Lombardia, from this well, side. No, I, I won't say because uh, I've been to, there is uh, ri uh, rice farms in, in uh, Friuli, Venezia Giulia. Don't forget, you know, it's uh, the Adriatic Sea is there, the mountains, this area that's very specific that, you know, for the cultivation of rice. Uh, they may be not as well known as the Piemontese yeah, or or uh, other areas, but they do have high quality products on, on the rice. Yeah, hand. rice. I mean, it's, it's always fascinating me because it's uh, it's a product uh, I, I would never like after when I was a little bit younger. I didn't never know it was uh, an Italian product. You know, it's like you go. <laughs> yeah, it's true because uh, if you think uh, um, a rice, uh, like uh, how, how they come, where do they come from, you know, and there is a huge desire. Like yeah. you, you for miles, miles for and miles and miles. miles. Where is a little bit of water, and they stay always on water. Oh wow! And uh, and it's crazy. And then from there it starts a tradition where it's like uh, aged rice. There is. Yeah, uh, uh, they're there going is crazy some, now. Yeah, they're it's true. They're going crazy. But I like know, a risotto regular. So. A good risotto has to do have the right amino acids uh, in order to break down to be creamy and, and perfect. So you should know your what kind of your rice you're using and for what purpose you know true these are carnaroli arboris for this case i'm using carnaroli because i'm like the the uh, the like well then, the, yeah the it's also of the product yes mm. and it's uh, when we're gonna finish that it's like we're gonna serve a londa this means is like when you serve it it's gonna make a, a wave. wave yeah and uh, wow. it's uh it's a it's a, sa a science about it because there is a uh, the perfect amount between fat and water because otherwise, if there is too fat, or too cheese, too butter, too everything, it's gonna just uh, divide it and it's not gonna look nice. It's, when, you, when you talk about balance, the two DOP products that we have here is mm -hmm. about balance. Uh, you know, you have the, uh, the Montasio, there's perfect balance of water, protein, and salt. Uh, the Prosciutto di San Daniele, that it's uh, the f perfect balance of salinity and sweetness, mm -hmm. uh, humidity, because you know, if it's too dry, because when they add the salt to start the, the drying process, you know, if they add too much salt, it be, you know, it dries out too much or becomes too salty. Then you're not able to taste it, you know. So balance is a unique, uh, it, it's the, the, the identifier of all those products or the uh, common denominators of the, of the products. And I think that's one of the hardest things to do as a it chef is. when you're cooking is balance the flavors, the textures, the salt, sure. the dryness, the, the whole thing. Mm. Um. And simplicity. Sometimes people, you know, you go overboard and, you know, they forget the basics. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Um, sorry, guys, I'm really focused on this ravioli right now yes. because it's stuck in here. Well, <laughs> you uh, took you took too much semolina out. That's why. I, I know, I know, I did, I did. Maybe I as a fr uh, friulano will do, you should have to use cornmeal. I know. Since corn I, I uh, should have. I'm gonna <laughs> have <laughs> cornmeal. Yeah, you know, cornmeal for them is unique. You know, that. that's okay. Some polenta. You go use some polenta on that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to. Oh my gosh. We're salvaging. I also overfilled them. You know, this thing, these things happen. Well, it's that's okay. it. That's it's true. It's like it's a classic Sunday morning in my in my house. So when my mom is like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> screaming about something is wrong. It's like, it's like it's the a, it's sauce a is going. Thing. It's the not sauce is going the wrong way. True, the, exactly. the filling is too much. You know, and, and uh, yeah. she might have to go like run uh, to the run store, up, wake me up, uh, and uh, oh, the no. burn the 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 so polenta. It's like, it's so many things. You know, it's like it's it's really it's really. Colorful. It's, it's, like it's, it's everyday like Sunday in yeah, a in an Italian family. Yeah. So, what's the typical dish that your mom would make on a Sunday? My mom, uh, I would say, is like she uh, she 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 doing a lot of stuff. It's like one of the things I remember is like on my family is mm -hmm. every year is a more uh, like a bagna cauda. You know, it's like from Piedmont, there is uh, this plate so which is anchovies, garlic, uh, butter, and uh, and cream cook for uh, for hours uh, and uh, you get like creamy and it's serving this pot uh, with a um, little flame on the bottom to keep mm -hmm. it warm 
a huge buffet of uh, vegetable uh, uh, meat and you dip inside and you have it. And this is uh, what the reunion of Sunday of uh, all my family is going is. Right, wow. Yeah? Um, it's like a... And a lot of more wine. So let's say that. It's yes. like a plate and a lot of wine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. That sounds delicious. I'm and wha what about it's like for... For you on New Jersey, what's the, like <laughs> what's the more uh, tradition? Honestly, it was always like Sunday sauce um, that was like roasted with like short ribs and meatballs and like sausage. It all uh, depends where your family over is from. pasta. Yeah, like yeah. that was usually what my mom did. And there was always some sort of like chicken cutlet, which is very New Jersey. <laughs> um, so yeah, like it was, it was always some sort of pasta. Like and even to now, to this day, like my fiance and I every Sunday have pasta, like some sort of spaghetti and sauce yeah because something. people people start getting scared about the pasta you know it's like no no no, i can eat more uh, carbo because like we we eat uh, pasta basically once a day and uh, it's uh, i mean and that I, that makes me crazy because i'm like we need to normalize pasta like pasta it's a good pasta we say that. Uh, um, good pasta good pasta good sauce good pasta i have like to agree though because in in reality like when you when i eat pasta in italy i feel completely different from when, not when I make it, but from when I eat it here in America at restaurants that are not good quality or using good quality ingredients. One thing like it just doesn't sit well. One thing I have to say about pasta, because you know, it's one of the items I bring in from Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, pasta is, oh, you know, it's one of those things that you should spend the extra dollar in order to, to get the product, because pasta, high quality pasta is an excellent product. It doesn't make you uh, doesn't have all the side effect everything else has. Right. Uh, if you can find pasta that is 100% Italian grain, instead of uh, so you can sort of you know the origins of the, uh, because you know, unfortunately there's a lot of pesticides on flour, mm -hmm. and that's why so a lot of people start having uh, effects to uh, low quality pasta. Right. So my suggestion is choose a great pasta. Don't look at the at the price point. Look at the quality of the product. I, sure. I couldn't you know, agree more. And that's the best way to, to get it back to the table. And we do have pasta here today as well, right? We have a... a that's fresh pasta. Fresh pasta. Yeah. So how do we feel about that and... Oh, that's great. Where you can get... You can't get fresh pasta from Italy. Actually, here, is a, is a trend in the U.S. Uh, uh, that is uh, what they call the ozone flush pasta, which is fresh, but it's packaged in ozone, so it can travel well. Uh-huh. It comes in 500 grams. You find the different companies make it. Uh, very quick cooking, but oh, but now there's a trend in stores to make their own pasta. You know, something that you'll find in Italy. So, uh, find a good pasta maker near your neighborhood and use it. And use it, yeah. Yeah. Also, we say it's like since uh, more year we come is like since uh, I would say I'm, I mean I'm coming to New York ten years ago, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, still new, but uh, a lot of here see the difference in the restaurant. Even it's like. Uh, seems like uh, people start to understand uh, how it's like uh, you know make a pasta is easier because make pasta is really easy right it's nothing nothing super hard and it's a cheap yeah and it's uh, i think it's a good for a restaurant to make his own and i think that they start to understand that and everyone make his own and uh, everyone make his uh, particularity you know mm -hmm. it's yeah. like uh, they it's, it's, it's like an identifier for the restaurant you know and pasta. I think that's interesting because I, I, as an American, I, it, what I've run into with a lot of people is that they're extremely intimidated by pasta and by making pasta. Like they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm only going to get that when I'm at a restaurant because I'm not going to make that at home. And it's like, why can't you make it at home? It's definitely. Well, go on YouTube. You'll find it. It's everything. attainable. You know, right. it's it like, like, you know, you find uh, great shows like this on YouTube. That's right. Like, you know. That's right. Uh, but uh, and it's you, fun. I mean. It is so much fun. By the way, I, I had that special tool, right? That like little cool ravioli maker. Well, all my raviolis got stuck in it. And I clearly should have just done it like this <laughs> from the start and made these beautiful round raviolis by hand, which are, look way better than these guys. So don't be intimidated by it. It's, it's, uh, it's just great. People got to use it all the time. All right. Um, I'm going to fill this up. So the risotto, risotto is, taking, uh, is taking about 15 minutes to be cooked al dente, so as we, we like it. And uh, as you can see, it, when, uh, when you cooked it, they took it off the amid they have inside uh, the uh, rice. Amino, so amino acids. And, uh, and it gives it like a little creamy, uh, so you don't really need, when it's going to be the moment of manticatura, you're just going to need some, a little bit of cheese, um, a little bit of butter, or oil, it depends on if you prefer it. 
um, we just taste our flavor. So I'm you know, for, for cheese, I will that. use uh, like this, the vecchio because the vecchio? It's, cause it's like that has the nuttiness uh, uh, to stand uh, the result with the pear. Too. With the pear. Okay. Well, guys, it looks uh, amazing here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I heard before mentioning my name about the wine. No, so I'm so sorry, I, I apologize like because, you know, <laughs> for a moment I got in. taken I by the, uh, stepped in, step in and joined us. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. well, uh, let me say a few things about the wines. Also, let me explain to our friends here that are, are you know, watching us uh, uh, about this beautiful box. Uh, so you uh, received this box and these are the products that were uh, put it in the box. Uh, so we have two wines that I'm going to talk uh, about it uh, just in a, little, uh, in a little bit. You have the fresh pasta and you also have the Montasio cheese and the San Daniele. Uh, we're going to give you like a, a very um, common uh, recipe that they do in, uh, in Friuli Venezia Giulia. And this is uh, the tagliolini with, with, with the San Daniele. Yes. Which is uh, a, one of the, those typical dishes. Uh, made in um, as a Sunday dishes in, as we in, were talking um, about. in Friuli. Uh, let's say a few things about the wine. Friuli it's a, it's a very well known region in Italy and also I would say around the world, especially for their white wines. Yes. You have like roughly twenty thousand acres uh, of uh, vineyards, Land. and uh, you know there are fifteen hundred companies that are actually active in producing wine. We are talking about all small company, so uh, the average uh, sites they have like a couple of acres and um, actors, and uh, they are mainly known for the white wines, uh, and the most famous of those is uh, Friulano. Uh, maybe some of you already know the story about Friulano. Uh, Friulano was a wine that was well known before, and uh, the original name was uh, Tokai Friulano. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had a, 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 you know, some, uh, some, uh, some issues, a dispute with our good friends from Hungary. We, they have another wine called Tokai, which is completely different because it's a sweet wine and Friulano is not a sweet wine. And uh, we were forced by European Union to change uh, the name. So from March 2007, uh, we could not call Tokai Friulano anymore, this typical you know, wine, but we have to call it simply Friulano. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. The two products are very different, and uh, they definitely appeal to a different, you know, audience. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's 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 one of the wine that basically defines the region. Basically, uh, it's a, it's it's a very interesting wine. It's generally used for uh, aperitivo. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, an entire class on aperitivo. We could have used that one as well. Uh, it pairs particularly well with the San Daniele Prosciutto. Uh, also goes very well with dishes with they have uh, eggs and asparagus uh, with you know uh, fish of course let's not forget that uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia is a region as a, 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 a beautiful city in that region called Trieste I'm particularly attached to that region because when I was little you know, even if I am from Puglia I spent quite a bit of time in uh, between Pordenone and Udine so I, I know and they were taking me all, all these uh, you know, um, Sunday trips to all the other regions, Gorizia, for example, uh, um, Aquilea, uh, Grado, uh, and, and then let's not forget uh, uh, Trieste, yes, uh, yes, which is yes. one of the most beautiful, I you know, cities in Italy. And if you haven't had the opportunity to visit, please do so, because you will, you will definitely love it. So we are on the Adriatic Sea. We are next on to the border with Slovenia. Uh, you know, when I was there, yeah, I was, yeah, was old enough, it was called Yugoslavia at that time, but uh, now it's Slovenia. You can just go through easily. Uh, our friends from Fiuli Venezia Giulia also, they do like promotional uh, activities for tourists and mm -hmm. they have wonderful itineraries that you can take. Uh, you also will find this a beautiful uh, uh, pamphlet which tell you all about it. So uh, the Friulano is uh, it's one of the main product. Uh, we have uh, a Friulano made by one of the oldest companies uh, in uh, uh, Friuli. Uh, Schioppetto. This is a wine that you know that the production started in 1965, and uh, it's still made. It's it's one of the most uh, uh, you know prestigious products from this company. It's 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 a you know it's an excellent product. We will serve this uh, 2019 uh, vintage, and uh, you know we will close this wonderful uh, 
uh, class with, with, uh, with a toast with this wine, so guys, get ready for it. Uh, but uh, this is not the only white wine that is made in the area. This is uh, it's a wine that comes from the Collio um, Goriziano. Uh, as many other regions in Italy, there are different uh, appellations, and Collio Goriziano is one of those. Uh, we have also many others, and you will find all the information in this pamphlet as well. Uh, but we also have uh, red wine in, um, in Friuli. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't know about it, but uh, they have a, a great uh, red wine as well. And one of those is probably the best one of those is their uh, ref, uh, Refosco, the Peduncolo Rosso, or simply called Refosco. This is really a very healthy, you know, wild red wine. Uh, it, it pairs particularly well with uh, uh, meats, uh, stews. Uh, Party cooking. Yes, mm. with, you know, with, with, with the, the type of cuisine that you find Friuli also should actually in, have uh, in the mountains of Friuli. Yeah. So today we have a, a, a version of this wine made by, by Bastianic. Uh, it's 100% uh, uh, Refosco, like the other one was 100% uh, Friulano. So uh, we also have other, you know, white wine made in the same area. You can find excellent uh, uh, Pinot Grigio. Mm, you, many, many of you may be uh, familiar with the Pinot Grigio, but uh, generally the, the, the type of Pinot Grigio that comes from uh, uh, Friuli, it's a, it's a higher quality. Uh, is also, you know, of course, a little bit more expensive, but uh, it, it's definitely not the type of Pinot Grigio that you, 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 you use for cooking. Even okay. if today <laughs> we had used some of this uh, <laughs> wonderful the risotto for our risotto that uh, Max is preparing. So how is the other, how is the preparation going over there, guys? Well, it's going. <laughs> I got all my ravioli except one out, so we're gonna do them in, we're dropping them into like a gentle rolling simmer. Uh, so they don't explode, um, but I do have five really beautiful ones uh, just, just for you guys to see a picture of. So I'm dropping them into boiling water. I have added a little bit of butter into my saute pan here, and I'm actually going to remove it from the heat and zest in some orange zest. I really like uh, citrus and orange with pear. I think it goes really well. And that's it. We're going to garnish it with some amontasio and call it a day. So these are going to simmer really quickly because it's fresh pasta. But so right. I'm, uh, I'm almost done with the risotto, so I turn off. Uh, I just cover for uh, about 30 seconds, so at least the uh, all ingredients get together. I'm adding uh, some, uh, some butter, uh, some Montasio grated. I thought you said a little Montasio. That's a lot. That's I like it. That's, that's, what, that's, means a little. that's what means a little. That's a, that's a little. <laughs> Some, uh, the black uh, it's a fluffiness of the, uh, of the yeah, shaving. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, and we start... Alonda, that's Alonda. what you call Alonda? Yeah, that's what we call Alonda. To the Alonda. wave. Beautiful wave. Ah. Beautiful yellow wave. See, uh, I find American risotto is uh, always too thick and overcooked and mushy. Um, so this, the fact that you can do that with it, yeah. is, that's a good sign. That's a good test if your risotto yes. is, is ready. It's a, it's a talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make risotto. It's like I think it's, a, it's a, I really make risotto for for a long time. It's like it's one of the first dishes that I learned to make, and, and uh, I always w love it. And it's so simple, uh, so, so difficult. Simple. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It really is. Beautiful um, and creamy. Right. I'm gonna add in. Oh, Federico's pouring our wine. That's yes. gonna go beautifully with our. Um, we want to taste the dish. uniqueness of that wine. I'm adding in the um, zest right now, orange zest. I could smell it because it's warm. I turned the heat off, but it's a really nice way to kind of jazz up your butter. Mesmerized by the wave. I know, the wave is kind of amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing. amazing. All right. The ravioli so are somehow maybe. not opening. And now is yeah. another thing, it's real tradition. It's like we put the risotto in the middle of the oh. plates. Mm -hmm. wow. And then, uh, like the classic one, like we have wow. to. Ah, I love that. So you learn something new. Every, every time I'm here, I learn something new. And uh, so we finish uh, with the pear. So we try to put our pear like a little bit around the risotto. So at least every bite you have the risotto. You have a little bit in there? Yes. Okay. My ravioli are done. We're going to go into 
my butter. And I know the people say it's like less is more, but sometimes it's like just a Actually it's like sometimes <laughs> more is more. It's more yeah. is more. It's just Especially right. a great Montasio is <laughs> yeah, uh, right, just gas it. the right touch. Beautiful. Beautiful. Guy. Really uh, yellow base in my, my dishes. It's like it's always yellow. <laughs> I thought those would break, but they didn't, so that's exciting. Alright. So your plating was way cooler than mine. <laughs> mine is just gonna get poured beautifully onto this Beautiful. plate. I'm going to garnish with a little bit more of our Oh, there was orange just on there too. Beautiful. Of our Montasio and some cracked black pepper, and that's it. Didn't that seem simple, everybody? Yeah, beautiful. And just as a reminder, it should be aged Montasio because the fresh Montasio will be a little too shrinky. Correct. Though. That is aged, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Age is bad. Aging good. Well, guys, I think uh, it was wonderful. So this is the time for awesome. you know, our Thank you. Uh, you know, toast. I can't wait to taste everything. Thank you very much uh, for coming here today. Thank I you. I think uh, we should all take a trip to uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia yes. and, uh, and visit that beautiful place and enjoy, you know, directly this product. So thank you again. Thank you, guys. Salute. Thank you. Salute. Salute.